So we have a lovely projector named Kip Winsett, who's going to come and introduce himself and say more because no one's better at introducing themselves than themselves, right? So here we are. <laughs> Hi, Moana. How are you doing? Oh, I'm so excited and honored oh. that you would come on our show. Welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. I don't do very many podcasts. Uh, I, you know, I don't have time for them usually, but uh, we this have a is very different. With, uh, yeah, Tressa is such a wonderful human. She yeah, was so on our I, show. Um, yeah, she's great. Anyway, for those of who, you who might not know me, my name is Kip Winsett. I'm the founder of Human Design System Pro. I've been a licensed analyst since uh, late 1999. Okay. So a long time. Uh, at that time, very, very few people were into human design. I mean, <laughs> very few people. I trained with Zeno, who was the only person at that time who was licensed in the United States by Rod to teach human design and certify analysts. Oh, that's wild. Um, yeah, that was, uh, that was a great experience. Um, after I finished that and got licensed, I happened to, uh, I, at that time, well, I still live very close to Shaitan Parkin who is, um, in case you don't know, really quite well known throughout the world, a brilliant man. And uh, I studied with him for uh, three years, face to face. So that was, uh, that was really nice. I got a really good, because when I finished my, my analyst training and I tried to do a reading, it was a disaster. No. <laughs> no. What? I was too much information. You know, I mean, yeah. I just didn't. It took me a while to figure out how to organize it, put it together, and get into a flow, and so on and so forth. And uh, I did only recorded um, readings back then. Oh, okay. You know, they, we didn't have Zoom. I'm, I'm, I'm so old, Zoom didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and actually, I don't. Those, I, don't yep. I, I still do it that way. For it's either a written reading or a, um, mm -hmm. a recorded reading. Okay. So uh, my background includes pretty much at uh, age 18, I was first introduced to the I Ching. Oh. And uh, just to set the stage, I was, uh, by age 22, I was a hippie. And uh, it was a great time to grow up as a four six. So having those, uh, the chaos of the third line for my first 30 years, mm -hmm. it was a blast. I mean, there was so much to bump into. So many bonds to be made and broken. So many adventures. I, I mean, just, just an incredible time. And during that time, I studied Zen. I studied all kinds of weird things. I said, well, yeah. Sufism, which is not all that weird, but yeah. the Book of Urantia, for example, and Zen macrobiotics and uh, things that are, they probably drifted away by now. Nonetheless, they all had a fair amount of good information. In my late 20s, I was fortunate enough to uh, hook up with a man who was, in, he had uh, started the College of uh, Religious Studies at San Diego State University back then. Hmm. And brilliant, brilliant, brilliant man. Uh, religious Studies is my major because of him, excuse me, my minor, uh, because he taught the I Ching and the Tarot, <laughs> mm -hmm. as, well as, as well as teaching uh, Kierkegaard metaphysical doctrine of the feminine, just as a few examples. Brilliant man, really expanded my, what would you call it? My access to the I Ching in, in a useful way. He gave me the questions to ask that are useful. You know, I found out from, from that experience that ask a question, that's a question in public and everybody's got an answer, everybody. Oh, that's, that's really? an interesting you know one, yeah. Yeah, Everybody's everyone an everyone has an answer for any question you ask. This is Anything. true. Yeah. And so answers are a dime a dozen. Well, maybe even a penny a dozen. They're really <laughs> cheap. Yep. Questions, a good question. Mm. The right kind of question can really uh, make a huge difference in a person's life. That was my experience anyway. And uh, he showed me how to use the I Ching again, long before human design to determine what my nature was, what my unified personality was, why I was born, why I wish to be reborn. You know, just four of those questions are related to Aristotle's 
way of studying things above, below. I, I won't go into it in detail, but anyway, I have a very solid grounding in philosophy, religion, um, all kinds of arcane things, <laughs> but they all have they all have their use. You know, you, your brain works at putting things together, but you got to put the little pebbles in before you. Yes. Can, and it, it makes a wall or a road or whatever it wants to make out of it. Right. So the more little, the more little things get turned on, mm -hmm. the bigger. I always thought of my my brain as being this tapestry. Yes. So we actually had a question come in from the audience. Okay. So your the question is: Do you have a question that you like to ask the most? And what question did you ask that has made the biggest impact on you? Oh, from the I Ching. Okay. Yes, I did for three years. Well, just a quick little background. If you haven't yeah. read the uh, Bhagavad Gita, right action. You have, there is a thing called right action. It actually exists. Mm -hmm. It's not ruled by formulas mm -hmm. or rules. It's in the moment, your capacity to recognize holistically the context in which you exist and do what's the whole, whole of it is do the right thing at the right time in the right way toward the right end. Mm, that's, that that's needs to be on a t-shirt. Oh, I like that. <laughs> what a grand idea. Right, yeah, or a mug? <laughs> Just oh, see it every I morning? It. Oh, that, right? Wouldn't that be cool? OK, that'll oh, be yeah. a part of our merch line. Got it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so anyway, I would get up any, every morning. Yes. And I would sit down and I understand this. I was working as a systems analyst and computer programmer. Mm -hmm. I went to work in a suit and tie. Everybody oh. else at work went to work in a suit and tie. Mm -hmm. And and we all had little cubicles and they, we were all really smart. I mean, you have to be to do that kind of thing. Logically smart. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody was into what I was into. No one. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I, I could not I could not talk about this at all to anybody at work. I yeah. mean, they, they saw me as an odd, weird ball anyway, <laughs> but, but I couldn't, I didn't want to exacerbate that. So mm -hmm. I would ask, and you have to be very respectful when you ask each other the question and you have to write it down. If you oh, don't write it down, yeah. it doesn't actually have any existence. That's You have to give it form. You, you have, have to, to bring it, that question into the world. So you write it down. Please inform me which principle of right action should I follow today? Mm. Now, just think about that question for a moment. Sit with that. Which principle of right action should I follow today? The darkening of the light. Pretend you're insane. <laughs> <laughs> What a party. Oh, no, but, you know, in the beginning, you know, you don't, the first few times you do this, you don't remember, you go to work, you don't remember, you ask the question, but you keep, you persevere. And eventually you remember, oh, I asked that question. What was the answer? I don't know. I can't remember. And eventually you remember what the answer would be. What the hell did, how uh, the marrying maiden? Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how do you, how do you so, eat, do the thing? Well, I, I quit trying to do it. I just started looking at the world through that lens. Oh. You know, trying to be in the now with that as a part of me in the now. Not trying to do anything, not trying to understand it, just, oh. Not really thinking about it so much as having, as being aware of the fact that I. Yeah. Uh, it changes the way you you carry yourself and you even like move. Uh, oh, all that kinds is. Of things. That's all kinds it's, of things. Oh my! You, it's almost impossible, really, to change yourself substantially, because mm. first thing is, okay, what am I going to change into? What am I going to do to change? What's up? What do I want to be? All of those come from you. So anything you pick is not really a substantial change. It came from you. How about this? What if it's when you read the language of the I Ching, if you get the correct copy, the, the one by um, God, I've said his name so many times now I'm getting one of those little blurps. Um, I'll think of it. Anyway, if you get that, it's preserved the structure of the ancient Chinese language and the way it talks.
-hmm. So right away, you're at a disadvantage. We don't think in terms of, oh, the image of the lake at the foot of the mountain. Yeah. We, just, we don't. And there, the superior man goes forth. It, it, it does not uh, further one to persevere. Cross the great water. Don't cross the great water. What is the great water? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yep. But you see, what, what, this way, you're always out. Of, you're not coming at it from within your box. We all live in our mm, own self narrative. Of course. Mm -hmm. and, and we want to change the self narrative. And so we don't want our changes to be based on the self narrative that we already have. Because then it's not a change. We're just adding to the story. I wanted a new, I wanted to go in a new direction, significantly new. Carve a every new day. path. Yes, uh, every day, every morning, three, a little over three years. Mm. And every night when I came home, to be fair, I would ask the question, please provide me with an estimate of the adequacy of my performance of right action as given today. Oh man, I'll tell you what, that book could nail you sometimes. <laughs> you feel like it. I, I was, when I was really new to it, um, for various reasons, when I thought I hadn't done well, I would punish myself pretty severely. Mm. I grew up in that. So <laughs> the first <laughs> a month or so, if I'd get one of these readings and say, you did a really bad job. That's what it meant to me. Mm. I would I would bite myself. I bite my arms, hit myself in the head. This is one of the behaviors I didn't want to have anymore. I didn't want to be that kind of. No, of course right? not. So just to give context to the audience, right? So human uh -huh. design is an amalgamation of many different systems. So one of them is the I Ching. So Kip is explaining his experiences with the I Ching. Um, so if you have further questions, please throw them in the chat. I'm sure Kip would be yeah, happy to absolutely. explain further. But speaking of questions, we have a human design related question for you, okay. which is what is your favorite part of your own personal design? Uh, yes, the 1020 channel. Mm -hmm. uh, and why? I, I should say, and why? <laughs> why is that channel your favorite? What part of it makes you go? I, hmm. I answered your question, lady. What do you want? <laughs> Next. So um, this channel, it it, it, it it does a lot of things. The, the primary benefit to me is that I always know the right behavior for me, for survival. Mm. All those, it, it, that's that's gate 10. It knows what to do, it knows what to say. And I have uh, that gate. Oh, do you? Okay. <laughs> I have that gate. One of the few gates I have in the G Center. I don't have much. <laughs> do you have a defined G Center? No, I have an oh, undefined. Oh, oh. oh, okay. Well, on the other end, of course, is gate 20, the now. In the now, in the moment, I know how to keep my butt out of trouble <laughs> yeah oh i and know it, it saved me many times when i was young i just I, I just said the right thing i didn't get any punishment instead just, i got rewarded you, oh danny's gonna be dying <laughs> to hear all that because we were talking about some of these questions ahead of time so the next uh -huh. question we have for you is uh -huh. who is kip now and how is he different from the kip before human design well, that, you would think that would be an easy question to answer, but I've had so many lives that it's not. Uh, I had a life growing up for three years with my grandparents. It was a fabulous life. It was everything you know a little kid could want. Mm -hmm. And then my, the World War II ended. My dad got out of the Navy. My parents came and got me. And my mom had some severe problems. And my life changed radically, dramatically. And I was stuck with her for... 12 years. <laughs> Fortunately, starting at age seven, I got sent back to be with my grandparents every summer. Nonetheless, it was so that was two lives already. Oh, yeah, we mm -hmm. moved, uh, we moved to Mexico, my dad got divorced when I was in California when I was of an age to choose who I would live with, because otherwise, mm -hmm. I'd have to go with my mom. So he waited, mm -hmm. he got remarried, and they went on a honeymoon to 
Mexico and they were forced to take me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're the third wheel. <laughs> <laughs> they had to take me though. <laughs> oh, so where are you going to leave poor Kip? Oh, I guess he's part of this honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, the, I got in trouble at school, and the principal said, "What's going on?" I said, "Oh, my parents got just got my dad got remarried. They're going to go to Mexico for six months." And he said, well, "What about you?" And I said, "Oh, I don't know. They're going to have me stay with somebody." Oh, <laughs> so yeah. the principal called my dad up and gave him all kinds of shit. <laughs> they had to take me. That's what I mean. I got in trouble, but I had an amazing experience. Then I learned to speak Spanish very easily. My girlfriend was wonderful person i went to an internationally recognized art school in san miguel de allende awesome. it was it was really great mm -hmm. i came back and, and you know it was my last year of high school and it was wonderful i had a grand time so i had a whole life from about age 22 i want to say to uh maybe 26 mm -hmm. where i was a hippie Mm -hmm. Full-on hippie. I had a couple of friends and myself had a ballroom in San Diego. It was mm -hmm. huge. It had been a roller skating rink, and we got hold of it. And we started bringing all the San Francisco bands in on the weekends to do these live concerts where you could dance. Acoustic ceilings, the sound just drove flat out. I mean, best light show on the West Coast. Well, they didn't have what was the best light show in the country at that time. Mm -hmm. Very creative guy. And uh, that was a whole lifetime. This is mm -hmm. that four, six guy, you know, just, wow, this is so cool. <laughs> Drop, hanging out with the Grateful Dead, hanging out with Quicksilver Messenger Service guys. So they all came down. We went right on the coast of San Diego. They all came down, spent a couple of days. And mm -hmm. uh, I got to jam with the rhythm guitarist for um, that Velvet Underground. Yeah, uh, everyone's awing over your adventures in the chat. <laughs> Part of this trip, when I was, uh, the summer I turned 25, I was living in Williams, Arizona, the gateway to the Grand Canyon, and I was going to the Native American church mm -hmm. uh, from um, not quite on the Navajo Indian Reservation. It was being held by a Cherokee Indian, and so right. he would let white people go. Mm -hmm. And we'd go down there, and the ceremony starts at uh, sundown, and it goes until sunup. And these, uh, Indians, God, they had such a profound effect on me. I've never seen anybody in church live out. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was the whole Christian thing. They prayed, well, not Christian, but they prayed. They started with the commander in chief, the president. They prayed for him. They prayed for the generals. They prayed for the non commissioned officers. They prayed for everybody they could think of all the way down. They prayed for people in their community, people who were mm -hmm. sick, who needed help. Uh, the whole one of the meeting would be dedicated to one person in particular, so that all the energy yes. would flow towards that person mm -hmm. who was never there because they were, you know, having real difficult times. I'd never had any experience. I was raised without religion, and, uh -huh. except when I chose to go to church, and I went to a lot of them mm -hmm. just for something to do. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just try this one on for size. Yeah, well, just something to do on a Sunday. <laughs> you know, right. My parents didn't go. It's something I did by myself. So yay for me. I got away from them and just did whatever I wanted to do. That was one thing mm -hmm. about my mom. She gave me an incredible amount of freedom to do. Freedom, today. yes. Mm -hmm. she gave me a lot of that. But uh, anyway, so I just, that's another life. Right. And I had this funny, I had this transition period where I started using the chain every morning. Right. I, I just... We, my, I was married to someone else back there, and we came back from Arizona to La Jolla. And I was not, uh, I was not any big shakes as a provider. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we had a place to live, we had food, and you know, we were all we were hippies, so it was right. okay. She wanted to have a kid. Mm. Oh my gosh, this is going to be a different thing. Mm -hmm. And so we did. And shortly after that, we moved to the Big Island of Hawaii. Oh, I love the Big Island. I lived in Hawaii for a period of time, but I was on Oahu. Oh yeah, I lived on Oahu later too. Yeah. So I had I had this whole life there on the Kona side that was Oh, incredible. oh please tell me you went snorkeling. Of course I did. Yeah. <laughs> of course I did everything. Oh, some of the best <laughs> snorkeling in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's I agree. wild. It's like you you're plopped bay. into an aquarium. It's yes, Hawaii is yeah, my awesome. happy place. Hawaii and South Korea. Those oh, I haven't been to South Korea, but I would love to go. 
Oh, it was. Uh, so like, anyway, I have had a lot of these. I've had a lot of lies. I, when I married my current wife, I was a computer programmer. I was making good money. Had a nice house in La Jolla. You know, we could do stuff. And she wanted to move because <laughs> mm -hmm. I've had all these adventures and she had not done anything. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to decide where are we going to move to? Mm -hmm. She wanted, she had lived in Hawaii for a few months before. And so we wanted someplace warm. Either one of us liked cold. Mm -hmm. So we decided to move to Oahu. Right. Mm -hmm. And I got a job as computer programmer there and we had to drive over the poly every day. Oh yeah, and we uh, we live just. Did a you block see the poly the ghosts? Did you take no. pork in your car? <laughs> For no. anyone who's like, what is Vana talking about? So there is a legend. So the poly is a highway that you have to mm -hmm. take to get from one end of the island to the other. And legend has it that uh, the goddess Pele is um, haunting it, and you should never bring pork on, into your car. And if you do, you'll notice a woman in white um, trying to hitchhike with you. And if you don't pick her up, like bad things happen. So you should always pick her up. So that's what I was talking about. You just reminded me of something that I haven't thought of in years. Oh, when we, when my second wife and I were living on the big island. We lived on the Hilo side and we lived in this place called uh, oh, uh, House of Pigs. That's what it meant. Oh, a very yeah. ancient side. I could. Uh, it was mostly jungle. I could walk around in the jungle there. I'd find old Hawaiian villages. You could tell from yes. the, the big rock foundations mm -hmm. that they had for you know where they would keep the pigs and build the war canoes and store yes. them and stuff like that out in the jungle. Fabulous time. Well, anyway, I was driving along one day and I saw this old woman hitchhiking. Oh, I was going home. I was going home. Stopped and picked her up, and I said, mm -hmm. where, are you, where are you going? She said, oh, I'm going home. I said, well, where do you live? So I live up in Volcano. Well, I live down in Oh, Hawaii, that's Hawaii. giving me chills. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> so Did you give Pele a ride? That's you crazy. I, did. I gave her a ride, and I gave her some money. Never saw oh, that lady again. That's crazy. I am actually getting chills. That's I am too. wild. <laughs> because I had never thought of it that way until you told me about that. Oh, and, uh, I forgot that's another another form she can appear in. If she's not like a young lady in white, she can also appear as an old lady. Isn't that outrageous? Oh, that's absolutely wow. wild. Oh, that it, someone just mentioned a, a really poignant comment. <laughs> Do the correct <laughs> thing then. <laughs> yes, it was correct for me to stop. I, you know, it was not a thinking thing. It was just a done yeah. thing. It's so wonderful to be here. Moni, you're all brimming. I see it. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. I get to talk with human design with people who know more than me. So frequently, I'm the one who's introducing people to human design. So when I get to meet people who know more, I'm just like, oh, I want to learn all the things. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, <clears throat> human design came onto the. Now. Yeah, I came when human design came onto the plane for me. I just remember uh, the first thing I did, uh, and I love the question by the way. Um, the first thing I did was um, I, I denied it. I called BS. I said, we don't have this tech yet. Next thing you're going to tell me is planes can take right angle turns in midair, you know? Um, <laughs> and then Meg Starkwell, Starkweather, who did, you, you may have run into her. She studied with yeah. Ra for a, for a little while, a uh, projector, um, emotional, uh, cross of the Sphinx. And uh, she would not let me go. She spotted me, started talking to me. And then, boom, here I am, you know, 15, 12, well, 12 years later she she just she wouldn't let me go and you know she, i would drain her you know i'm a manifesting generator i have 10 20 as well and um and it, it was uh it was just I, I would drain her and then one day she beat me over the head she read my children and my jaw hit the floor and, uh, and i was a believer ever since she she just wouldn't stop i i, I owe her all of it she crazy wow. Crazy Meg wouldn't wouldn't stop. I'm like, don't you run out of energy? <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. what I say now, but back then I didn't know to ask that. And it's so Aren't those people amazing. Yeah, it's so They're beautiful. Like, it's so beautiful what? how specific like human design can get. Like how detailed, how precise that anybody who is a skeptic, rightfully so, like be skeptical. There's lots of crazy things out there. It's so on point and so pure and also so unattached. You can go along with this or not, but you like you feel that realness. You feel that truth. Yeah, yeah, I, you, know, you know. Go ahead. Go Lee. ahead. 
Go ahead, Kip. I was just going to say that there is this thing of I'm an I'm a human design nerd. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. But you don't have to be a human design nerd to to reap the benefits and the values. In fact, in some ways, it's better if you're not. Us nerds, we tend to tend to start thinking too much, and really, that just gets in the way of of it all. I, I've just the last few years, I've really been able to you know, really let go of a lot of the thinking about it and just let it unfold yeah. and happen, you know, and and it's so, but I think it takes a long time to build up the trust to do that. A, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's not an easy thing to surrender, you know, to anything. And, uh, but once you do, whew. Everything it's, changes. Uh, it's, yes, it does, it does. It's a, yep, it's an amazing yeah. amazing thing. Law always cracked me up because um, <laughs> he was always saying, "Don't think, don't think." Then that's right. all he did was think out loud. <laughs> right. But, but he 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 addressed that in, in one of the lectures I heard. He said, "You know, most of what I say it's just interesting." <laughs> ah, yeah, that's funny. You know? Yeah, well, it is. It's true. You don't really need it. You know, if, if the basic premise is that you're wired this way. Yep. If you're wired this way, then you just give, give in and do it. Just do it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know it, know it, right? You just don't. The, the less you know about it, as long as you can surrender and not uh, let your mind take over. Uh, I it mean, not it, sure that. It's for truism. Yeah. It's for truism. Another, another question that got asked you, Kip, uh, from before, mm -hmm. I was loving it, was, uh, your uh, a question, a uh, favorite question to ask. And I think the, the the person who asked that question or the question I asked it was as it relates to inner reading. And so, cause that's where I went. And I just remembered my answer to that question was, I like to ask, is that true? Is that, cause I'll, cause I'll be in a, I think you're right minded too, as I recall, um, I forget. Uh, I'm right head. Yeah, okay. Well, right head, left the, mind, left mind, right head. Okay, and so here I am stuck in my rightness and I'm flowing out. I don't know what I'm saying because it's coming out in the moment. And then suddenly I'll realize I just said something really big and it might be upsetting. And I asked the person, is that true? Is that true? Yeah, no, of course you don't like that. This is that. You hate this. Your favorite day is when you do that. And when your husband does this, that's when you get the most pissed. And then suddenly it's like, oh, oh, is that true? <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. By the way, is that true? Yeah, my favorite question. Uh, that's a good one. I don't, let me think. I ask questions in sessions, but not in readings because I don't do them live. Okay, yeah, I do them live, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I think I charge, I forget what I charge now. Two fifty, three hundred dollars $300 for a reading, but it's three hours recorded. Mm -hmm. yep. And to put in that much time, I've got to, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta write. I gotta get in and, and you know, because I can't remember all this stuff. I'm not. That's not the kind of person I am anymore. I used to, but not now. Right. And so, um, it's just they get more information if I do it that way. I have the 1762 channel, which yep. it's hard to decide decide between 1762 and the 2010 because I love all three of my channels. What can I say? They're beautiful. They're wonderful. Um, I am just a hound for details and yeah. organizing those details i suck and, at uh, it oh no i'm so good at it i, I know you yeah. are yeah that's your thing man <laughs> it's a beautiful yeah. thing yeah i mean it's one of many beautiful things all kinds of beautiful things so that's how i mm, interact with the world so to speak it, I don't even it, know it, how to write that much. I I, I can, but I, I it's it's I I'm dying to get on the phone with them and just start. I don't even prepare before a reading at this point, uh, except to look at their chart and maybe check their Sun Earth a little bit. I'll, I'll check a few of their things and then I'll uh, five minutes or eight minutes before and then I'll start yeah, talking. If I if I'm doing it, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mona. Oh, I was just gonna say we have a question from our stream from our some of our commenters. Oh, oh yeah, we're gonna go on forever. Yeah, what what was that? <laughs> What What's was the, the first question we missed? It was well, hey, let's run in, let's do the uh, the audience question and then we'll go into the other ones. So, what's okay. the third channel you have kept? Because you mentioned the uh, 1020 and then the 6217, I believe you just said, and then you have one more. Yes, I do. Anybody want to guess? 
I'm not fair because I think I I think I remember it from looking at a chart, so I can't. Yeah, right. Right. Moni, you want to you want to take a crack at it? <laughs> I, I, I no? don't know. I, I'm gonna like start overthinking it. It'll take too long oh, okay. for me to try to decipher through it. Okay, the first thing that comes to mind, Moni, is or just say something that comes to mind. Anything. Yeah, I mean, seven. it would have to be something that's not going to light up the emotions or the sacral or the spleen. Good girl, so then, good. <laughs> then it would have to be another head, ajna, or throat gate would be my guess, or another um, identity to the throat. Getting warm. See, there you go. So the 31.7, so another uh, uh, yeah. identity to the throat. That makes sense. Uh, if you read uh, Gate 31, the Gate of Influence, if you read that in uh, the I Ching, it's really beautiful. It Talk talks about, it. Uh, yeah. about yeah. it. It's really cool. It, back in, you know, this is a very old book, thousands of years old. It's, it's been around for a long time, it predated Confucius by quite a, many, a long time. But at that time, men were it. They were, you know, the top dog in every every possible way. Uh, women didn't get much, you know, unless they were born into a royal family. And even then, they didn't. They didn't, you know, it was very constricted. But yeah. Gate Thirty One talks about how a man should uh, approach a woman if he wants to be married. And he said, and he said, put yourself below her. Literally, she is now ahead of you. She's above you. You're down below. You, maybe you can influence her, but and, and if you do that, if you say, hey, look, how, here's how much I love and trust you. I don't have to be your ruler. I'm okay, you know, in a relationship where you have equal privileges that way. I mean, this is modern talk for the way they say it. Right. Uh, and I thought, gosh, you know, that's uh, it's very romantic, frankly. Well, yes, it is. It really is. You know, the, it's, it goes back to the medieval knights who wore their lady's scarf around their wrist when they yeah. danced it. And, you know, all kinds of things. And uh, I started bringing the King Arthur books when I was about eight. So I loved uh, I've always been a romantic. I really. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm huge that way. My my wife, the way I met her, was it was very romantic as well. But let's not we're not to go there. Moni, you're you're, you're being too quiet. So let me <laughs> I have ask a, you a question. Yeah, Moni, talk some more. <laughs> I have a completely open throat. I need somebody else to to come at me with stuff. So. Well, we're inviting you, Moni, we, oh, because we you. love thank you so you. much. <laughs> I just don't want to yeah. interrupt, and you're in the middle of it. What do you have a question for me? Yes. Uh, how long have you been in human design? I am in my sixth year. Six years? Yeah. Yeah. And so what's your biggest change, would you say? Oh, I mean over everything. That six year period. I mean, just learning how to like understand myself. I'm I'm an ego projector, so I have the twenty five fifty one and that's it. And trying to continually live like everyone else and failing miserably. But having the will to do some really amazing things, but not that consistent energy. Um, so I would just live completely incorrectly until everything broke down during my Saturn return. And, and then we had to pick all the Humpty Dumpty pieces back together again. So now I'm doing great. But just understanding that there's nothing ultimately wrong with me, that there's a way that my being can function that is correct for me and I can have mm -hmm. amazing things happen and just learning how to rest. I just need to rest between doing anything. I lay down, I do something, I lay down, I do something. And like I could really work that with my, my will and my identity. I have something, Moni. I, I think we spoke about this, but since your, your life force channel is uh, 2551, um, Kip and I both have a 25. Um, so when that's your only channel, I, I, I'm still, it's still an identity. It's still an identity authority. But the more I look at it, I've been willing to break it up into two separate authorities combined into one, an ego identity authority. Because, and, and I was just, I'd love to get your input on that, um, Kip. It's, it's, it's a fanciful little detail that I know Rod dealt with. And he, he said two separate things about it over the course of the years. One set of classes, he said one thing. And then I remember I got his classes for like eight years later in the next country. And he said a little different. And I was like, so, uh, you know, I've chosen to synthesize my own. Do you only have 51, uh, uh, 25? Is that an identity or an ego authority? Is that I for me like or for Kip? I, I, I guess it's for all of us. I guess we need the, the Jeopardy TikTok sound <laughs> going now. <laughs> I, I'd actually like to jump on that because yeah. um, 
I have, of course, having the vessel of love as my cross, I have, like you said, I have gate 25. 51, uh, if you read in the I Ching, that's the gate of shock. And uh, mostly Ra talks about shocking, shocking people awake. But really in the I Ching, what that gate talks about is the capacity to be steady and calm and carry a chalice full of wine across a high wall while there's battles raging around. In other words, it's yeah. the capacity to survive shock, no matter how, how strong it is. Yeah. Now, yeah. in that channel, you've got 51, it talks about taking a leap of faith, jumping into gate 25 and innocence. If you don't land in innocence, forget you it. You don't land. Yeah. You yeah, need so the to me, yeah. This is this is about identity more than it is, but you have to have the ego energy, right, to do something from your point of innocence. You know, <coughs> people uncontrived and natural behavior, right. like yeah, a child. Right. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And if you, anybody wants to know who they are, go back every day and think about your childhood. Every yep. day, just go back yep. and start thinking until you see the patterns of how you behaved, how much trouble you got in or whatever, you know? Right, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's me sometimes, oops. Yeah, what I like about it is that, you know, there's only one manifest manifesting center in human design, only one. Yeah. Oh, I've got, the, I've got this, I've got the emotion center, and all the energy and all this power and everything. It's, it's not hooked up to the throat, it's, does it manifest? You, but what hooks directly into the throat with no impediment Ego. whatsoever? No, the G center. Oh, oh, oh. All three of those channels yep. go directly into the throat. Well, actually there's four of them. They go directly into the throat, which I take to mean, and I'm here to manifest myself. Dude, that's a really interesting point because my 1220 is super right now and I'm only safe when I don't think and because now is an uncontrived right action. Yeah. And, it, and it brings me to everything. Every time I'm in a reading, I, I tell people there's two mathematical axioms. They're like maxims of law. Seeing it kills it. If you see the conditioning finally and experience that you just saw it, yeah, well, that, that tends to start to kill it. it start, you start to get back to you. But more importantly, the kid is always right. The kid yeah, is yeah. always right. You, maybe you can't do what the kid says right now because you're in the middle of an adult life, but the <laughs> kid is right. Yeah, the, and so yeah. I, you get to the simple. Well, do you want to do it? Well, not really. Well, then that's true. You don't want to do it. You know, that's, the kid is always right. As an, as an SPP, I've always done what I want. Yep. I, I manifest myself. I make, I, I don't, when, when Chaitan gave me my first reading, and he said, you don't really know how you make decisions. If somebody would say, why did you decide to do that? Your answer is going to be some, oh, I don't know. I just, I just did. There's no thinking involved. If I, right. you know, something comes up, I go, oh, I want to build a house. Never mind. I never built a house or anything for that matter in my life. I just go and do it. And it's, uh, I've thought about this and I've described it in so many different ways. My authority is right there beside the monopole. It doesn't matter what I choose, go right, go left, it's gonna be all right. Yeah. Cause you know, the monopole is driving it all. You can't yeah. get back close to it. So uh, I think it's a very privileged thing to be an SPP in that sense, but I really- What is this I, I acronym you're saying? This acronym? Self-projected projector. A what? Self-projected projector, SPP. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Yeah, my, myself is my authority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, and it, and it, how would I say to myself, don't manifest? <laughs> well, you wouldn't all say to yourself people, anything. The timing all, would have you manifesting. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. All my life, people were trying to tell me how to manifest. Right. And uh, I got in a lot of trouble as a kid because I didn't listen to them. You know, I just yep. didn't. I just, yep. no, I feel very, I feel very fortunate. Everybody, open discussion. Uh, white centers. What's your What's your basic thing about Mo white centers? Moni, would you like to take that? Because I'll just start talking. But why don't you go first? On are we yeah. talking about white centers in general, or mine specifically? In, in general, general, white centers. 
or and, yours. I don't care. And what is specifically the question about the white centers? What's what's your what's my take on basic them? thing? Yeah, I mean it's taking in the energy of the other and like amplifying it times double. And then the brain, like the mind feels that and won't necessarily understand what that is. And then the mind will come up with a story of like, how do I deal with this data ultimately, this like enhanced data from another person of this outward energy coming at me. And then the mind tries to come up with a story to make sense of it, except that's usually at the detriment to my, my actual body. So learning to take it in as data from other people, but not data that should be affecting my decisions. Interesting. Yeah. That's that's great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Me, the white centers are magical um, because I used to hate the emotion. I love the emotional center so much. I kept marrying it. And uh, I, mar <laughs> I kept marrying my mom and dad is what I married. I married my mom and dad over and over a couple times. A a and and then when I came to human design, my first few years were I, I couldn't stand the emotional center. When I say couldn't stand it, I, I, I just learned to be afraid of it. Cause that that thing would cut into me and i would get nervous kip if you saw my chart you'd understand i'm under pressure i'm this i'm that I'm going through a confusion process because i'm defined up there and uh and then the emotions taught me and then the open root taught me and all this stuff taught me that's who i'm not so i got to witness them amplify themselves and show me and teach me and school me on who i'm not we're trying to get to the airplane and Antoinette with a defined route being driven, you know, the marrying maiden, as you'd said before. And then she's, we got to hurry. That's, you go ahead. I don't want to, you know, you have. And I'm like, don't worry. We're going to get there. We're not. You should have got, you know, she's yelling at me. I'm like, hey, that, it, I'll, we'll make it. It's not my pressure. I, I'm always in the right place. You know, I'm always in the right place at the right time. So she got so mad at me. And I <laughs> I had such a hard time saying it. And then the girlfriend I last broke up with, she was a 36, 35. And, and, and so, and I, uh, you know, obviously I was attracted to that and younger man. And, and, and at the very end, my right action was very simple. I was like, honey, I love you, but I love me more. <laughs> and she didn't like that. I said, no, it's, it's a lot more actually, but it's good. It's okay. But I do love me more. No. And, uh, and, and right action and leaning into the emotional solar plex center has been so juicy for me. Oh my God, that wave is coming in. I love it for its teaching capacity, Kip. That's what I love. Oh, That's yeah, really okay. I, I'm kind of in that, uh, that boat myself. I look on them as my allies. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of not self-thinking. Right. Because, uh, look, evolution is not handing out crappy packages. You look at your chart, you know, and that's one of many kinds of designs to have. And they're all those designs are have been tested by evolution, most of them for millions of years. Uh, I think the most recent something like 40,000 years. This is a lot of testing. Yeah. And, and every behavior that's in there is a possibility has a value to survival and more than survival to thriving as well. Thriving. Uh, abundance. All yeah. of it. So to think that somehow the the white centers are getting in the way uh i just i'm willing to go on an emotional roller coaster once in a yep. while yeah i'm willing i'm willing to go on all kinds of things once in a yep. while i'm really yep. picky about who i go with sure you know uh because if they're not going to support me in that i don't want anything to do with it you know what i mean i, I i'll take risks in the in the natural world well it doesn't count i have a totally open spleen i'll take any kind of crazy risk if i'm by myself yeah but if i'm with people <laughs> things get scary because they've got mm -hmm. to define the ego you know like, oh my god i'm afraid you know blah 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 right so i need people that aren't <laughs> right of that stuff right and then it's, it's so much fun i'll run down the side of a, a, a mountain with somebody right you know it, it's cool i'd rather do it by myself but no fear 44 is my only gate off the spleen. I have plenty Same. of fear and it has kept me from breaking bones. Oh, we have another question down here. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yep. Uh, what aspects and parts of their designs or designs um, have you noticed makes people want to learn more? That's a, that's an odd question. That's a tough one too. Um, yeah, it is. Sort of all, it's so different. Yeah. That's so different. They all tend to. I find the head center gates going down to the, the Ajna, any of the Ajna gates tend to make people either want to learn or want to deny it. Um, uh, people that have the first line, <laughs> first line profile yeah. in particular. 
Yeah, there yeah, you go. Know that. And, and, and also the four six, because the four line is just the upper trigram, the bottom line of the upper trigram. It's investigating in a different arena is all. Yeah. Yeah. The first line down, you know, it's investigating at the foundational level. And uh, I don't know if you know this, all those profiles substantially come from material that's in the Wilhelm Baines translation of the I Ching. Uh, there's a section in there that deals, describes the lines, you know, the first line. You have to understand what uh, China was like and what court was like, because this I Ching was not used by the average person. It, it, it was just for the people, the rulers, more or less, you know. Uh, and when you when you kind of get that, you understand why people project onto the fifth line or the second line. I mean, those are both second line is the ruler of the bottom bottom trigram, and the fifth line is the ruler of the top trigram. When shit went wrong in China, who would they go to? If somebody launches an attack. Who do you go to? You run to the you run to the emperor. You run to the right. ruler. Right. You know? All of this, 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 this kind of behavior. Or you draft the natural, or you draft the natural. <laughs> that was my book. I'm a, I'm a two four, so I would get. <laughs> Chaitan's a two four, I think. Oh, I think he is. Yeah. You yep. got, I don't. I, I got too many stories, so. You do, uh, Skip. You're loaded. It's such an honor to be here I'm with you. I love this. This well, is great. Just, I've been around for a long time, and yep. I've been always open to life. You know, whatever, mm. never, whatever came my way, if it was not, you know, well, I, I right can't even think, <laughs> yeah, but it was right for me right then. I just went with it. I didn't, you know, whatever, we'll just do this. I had a whole a lot of amazing adventures from it. Not all of them were physically comfortable, right? but all of them grew me. It was like, yeah, they were amazing. Yeah. 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 Oh, five, two. Here we go. We got oh, that was there was a response to somebody in the comments. So the first part, let me show that one. Mm. She, she said, those are great answers. Thanks. Uh, even though it was kind of weird uh, as a 5-2, ah. it has been hugely eye-opening for her. And then I responded that 5-2 is very rare, so it must be fascinating with the conscious 5. I don't think I've done a reading in the last several years for a 5-2. I can't remember doing that. They're, yeah, they're rare. Because they, they, they basically yeah. have to call themselves. If they don't call themselves, it just no one's going to break through. At least with me, if someone knocks on the window long enough, they'll break through some likely a little bit. But the five you two, get, you can't have it. They don't, don't let you get pissed off when they knock. Yeah, well, you busy do every single time. Thing. It's like they do. I'm sure I'm busy. That's my. I'm, I don't know. I'm sure I'm. Bu I'm sure I. I and then and then I see a face, and then I have to. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, right Danny, right. can you elaborate on that? But then I don't mind it so much usually. And then I have yeah. new fun. And so I'm aware yeah. that my second line, even though it says no and it's a great nihilist in so many ways, if you pull it out, then it'll have some fun probably. What were you going to say, Moni? I was going to say, can you elaborate on that with the 5 2 compared to like, let's say the 2 5 and why like they'd have to call themselves up? That's really fascinating. I think people would love to hear that. The 2 5 technically calls themselves, but that's because it's a lower tired dry gam. They really don't know that they're doing it. You know, I mean, they're, they're totally unaware. Second lines are unaware that they're self absorbed in a process of being uh, ready to do something naturally that's just so cool. They just don't know yet. And so they're very filled with lots of, often filled with lots of stuff about like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then the mind takes over. 5 2 is aware because that fifth line's now out front. It's or it's yeah. in the personality. And so they're already aware that people project on them. The second line isn't aware. They're a little bit, maybe, but we're not really aware. We're just broadcasting. And other people get pulled in and they're like, huh, you might be able, you might do this natural thing. You might be good at this. And I was trying to offer advice. Fifth lines is different. They have to get a little paranoid. They have yeah. to have a little bit of. They have to get practical about who they let project on them because they become aware whether they have words for it or not that the other person coming in on them doesn't quite see them as they are M mostly not definitely not totally mm -hmm. not this is granite written in stone it's just tending to be this way and so they learn to ask hey, you know what, 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 what does that person want from me you know and because there's a hermit, yeah, and so because there's a hermit underneath, you know what I mean. That the answer is I don't care. I'm out. You know what I mean. I, I I'm busy. Uh, street lights came on. My mom called me. I gotta go. Whatever it is, you know. And so therefore they call themselves more than anything uh -huh. else. 
that's how I would put that. Sort of what came. Is that does that sound true? Here's my question. Does that sound true? Um, to the person who asked it, does that sound? Yeah. Well, we just had a five two on there who answered the uh, asked uh, the question. Ask what does she think? Yeah, what does she think? That was. Yeah, do, that's do what. Do you think well, that's true? Yeah, what do you think, Jess? <laughs> yeah, so she'll does that relate that. to your experience as a five two? But I mean, that was my my, my impression of it all. I've have been okay. able to go through a couple of them, not many. Same okay. thing with four ones, and you know, we don't see so, as many. What kind of design do you think projects the most? What kind of design, like outwardly projects or receives the projection? No, outwardly projects. Because isn't it the, the second line projects outward and the fifth line is projected upon? And then there's also like the open will is projected on or gate 41. I know it was like projected upon that fantasy. You were just and talking the profile, though, right? Yeah, sorry, I'm going too deep. You, right, Kip, were you just talking profile? What profile no. projects them? No. Oh, oh just okay. in general. Just in general. You know, what kind of design projects onto the world the most? I mean, projectors project with the individual, like inward and then projecting it. I'm just going to keep listing things and eventually, there you go. We always, we project <laughs> our, we, we I'm going to take a stab at that. I'm going to take okay. a stab at that, notwithstanding okay. the fact that the projector penetrates. So if you just take that all by itself, it's the projector period. Um, yeah. But it, it, in a sense... Um, and in a big sense, that is it, because you guys are directing us with your projection, whether we know it or not. You know what I mean? And it's it's an amazing thing. Um, but if I had to put a few things together, I would say put the 15-5 with the channel of charisma and some and some two-ness and some five-ness or maybe even a five-two altogether. And and you've got something that especially if those are also in the nodes, put that 34, put that 3420 in the nodes. And now people see a person of action, that five, two, they want that action to be for them. They're pulled in by the magnetism of that giant 15, you know, five coming in, pulling everything into a rhythm. And I could see that combination being very, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. attractively pulling in and yep. Well, we have a, a new question. Yeah. Oh. What part what of the part human of design you? system do you think is most misunderstood? Oh, great question. Yeah. What do you think, Moni? What do I think is the most misunderstood? It's interesting because I think like the projection field, the two and the five, I think that takes some time to, for people to understand of like the two is projecting that skill or that ability outward, whereas like the five is being projected on by other people that they are able to do something and kind of save the day. So I, I don't know if it's the most misunderstood, but that one definitely has come through a few times and trying to like grok that and understand that with like the twos and fives in my life. I can see that. I can see that. Mm -hmm. I have one. If, if you want me to go, or do you going to sure. go? Um, yeah. yeah sure. um, most cup, two things most misunderstood is that human design gives you permission to just do whatever you want. You still have to follow right action. There are rules to this material plane and we are love does push the direction love empowers the direction and 90 percent of the love from the vessel is empowered by the is either the fiery ego or the sacral you know what i mean so it is generated and it's pounding so mm. so it's that you can do anything you know you can't do anything you want you're supposed to do what lights you up that part's true but this mm. is in decision making but just to go be a debaucherous fool because you think you can just do anything you want you're not following right action you're in trouble a big trouble and and that's one and two that the not self is who we really are i mean that these that the 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 torture of the person just coming to it and you start showing them and there's always a certain amount i've never seen anyone get out alive without a little bit of torture to themselves who am i what is this I, you know i've never seen someone come fresh brand new and suddenly oh they're great you know you know when you start pointing out the things they need to know and all that and and uh and so it's this perception that the not self it's this perception that your mind can make decisions that your mind that that, that and it's i guess that's not the human the human design doesn't teach that but it's misunderstood that how profoundly human design shows mind does not make decisions uh, i don't know if that's i think um, i think the part that's most misunderstood is conditioning hmm. you know people are uh wild to get rid of what they somebody else told them is condi they're conditioned mm -hmm. I happened to, uh, my major was psychology. I worked in research psychology and uh, basically the new age movement, self-growth and so on and so forth. Um, 
but I was a big fan of uh, B.F. Skinner, who is the guy that basically invented the whole concept of operant conditioning and how it works. You know, he he actually trained pigeons to guide uh, rocket ships. Well, rockets. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, he, he he knew what he was doing, and from the moment a woman becomes pregnant, she's being conditioned by the baby. Yep. The very moment. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, people keep saying, talking about it like it's a bad thing. Yeah, it's uh, a when that point. baby, when that baby comes out of the womb, it continues. And as soon as that baby cries, you got to hop into action. You pick it up, pat it back, give it a bomb, blah, 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 all these things. And it keeps growing up, you know, and, and it keeps that child keeps on conditioning because we have to take care of that child and it conditions yep. our behavior shit my dog conditions me yeah <laughs> she wants me to give her a little bit of snacks from my breakfast she comes up and starts poking me with her paw and i give it to her i'm well we're, yeah i'm conditioning her that she gets rewarded yeah she wants the thing now if she wants it she has to lie down and put her head down you know so she's not begging i can it's it it's an interaction that goes on it, it, it's a relationship and yeah. I'm big on relationships. Relationships to me are really, really, really important. And uh, to think that somehow you were crippled in, because of the design you have, you're, you're crippled there. But you're not. You're not. It might take you a long time to fit, find your footing. Yeah, that's, that's the part. That's quite different. You know, yeah. you, you have to grow up, and you only grow up by meeting life and by trying to improve the way that you meet life. It's not something, another thing I really don't like about seven years, uh, sorry, but I made major changes in myself in three years. The right. three years I asked that question, huge changes. Uh, deconditioning, yeah, but I wasn't trying to decondition. The only way you get rid of a behavior, the only way is by doing something else something different than that. It yep. doesn't matter what you think. It yep. doesn't matter what you read. It doesn't matter what you say. You have to do different. I and, agree. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's a good one. That, that, that is a good one. The conditioning does get a bad rap. We need that conditioning. Condition me, baby. That's what I'll say in my next <laughs> movie, Edward. The right? next merchable phrase, yeah. right? Condition, Condition me, baby. Me. Oh, so this right? will be our final question that we're going to take uh, in our discussion portion before we go into bingo. So just reminding everyone. This is such a good question. <laughs> if you go first on this one. This okay. is, you know. What is some advice you share with people beginning their experiment? Well, it depends. With one of the things I like to tell uh, people who are kind of new at it, who are projectors, is there aren't any projector police. <laughs> Do whatever you want. You know, experiment because your setup is a little bit different than mine. So experiment. Yeah, I know. We tell you wait to be invited. Wait. But even Ross said, "I just was." Uh, you know who Jeff Dusky is? You know he's always posting quotes of Ross. And there's a great one about the projectors that I, I was so glad he said it because people listen more to him than me. He said, look, the thing with the, with the invitation, this is for important stuff, a career, right. Right. a marriage, you know, uh, you can't just sit around waiting to be invited. Right. The invitation, there's always invitations coming all the time. You ignore them because you don't like them. Yeah. Right? It's so it, it's it's and, and you, maybe you get recognized, but maybe you get recognized as being a, a creep. <laughs> right, right. You no, know? all right. Or what a do you do with tag, that? Right, right. A <laughs> jerk. Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, it, it's uh, it's about being um, discriminating. Mm. Yeah. You know, and you, that's what your cognition is for. How's this taste to me? How's that right. smell to me? Does this smell fishy? Probably not for me then. Mm -hmm. right. You know, if, you, if that's what your if smell is your cognition, it's mine. Yep. That's, what we, <laughs> that's what we have these things for, is so that we can, you know, your mind can't keep up. It's not that there's something wrong with your mind. It's just that everything that happens in the body happens 10 times faster than it happens in the head. Mm -hmm. Your head cannot keep up. Not when it comes to making decisions. No, it just can't do it. No. Nope. You know? 
So that's why I get so confused. It brings me to the <laughs> one, of, one of my favorite things. This piece of advice, and I'll I'll say it to generators. I have other advice for it that's more general, but to generators, my big advice is we're entering you into an experiment. This is no joke. We're entering. You're gonna have to witness this. Seeing it kills it. The kid is always right. I teach them about all that, mm -hmm. and then I get them to this point where my advice is about beginning your experiment. If you're a generator, notice. The skip of a record's worth of time it takes between the immediacy of your sacral versus a skip of a record oh, later, wow. tenth of a second later, that mind starts saying stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I would bring them to it. I was like, some of them are so young they don't remember record players. So this this example is now getting old. <laughs> but, but how long is a skip on a record, right? It's it's a skip on a record, it's like a tenth of a second, unless it's, unless it's bad. But it's a skip. It's a tenth of a second, a quarter of a second at most, very right. fast. But you yeah. can't miss it. You can't miss it unless you yeah. aren't listening, you know? And so it's the same yeah. thing here. The biology is moving at the speed of chemical electricity. So about as fast as a, a, a flash, as fast as a battery can turn on a flashlight, that's your sacral talking. A skip of a record later, you got to listen for it. Your mind starts telling you stuff. And then I start asking him questions. My favorite yeah. advice is witness the skip of a record later of your monkey mind. It's yeah. lying to you. It does not know. <laughs> you're gonna experiment so you can see it you need to see it see and it kills it so yeah, yeah. i like that yeah. okay really well, your turn. oh yeah, my turn i didn't know i was gonna be part of this question too um Ooh. don't be afraid to play around ultimately i mean it's an experiment and sometimes the energy can feel really bad you know it can feel like Ugh, or a scratch or like a, a whack when you are doing the incorrect thing you know when when the generator is not following their sacral and now they got sucked up into this whole weird situation you know when the projector initiates and you know we trip and fall on our face like it's part of it and don't be afraid to bump into things on the third line. So of course, this is what I'm saying. Uh, you know, just don't be afraid to bump into it because it's it's yeah. a learning process. And especially it's like, we didn't grow up with this. We didn't learn to be ourselves from birth. We learned to be the opposite of ourselves. So it's gonna take a minute to, to learn how to, you know, navigate the world as ourselves. And, and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna trip and you're gonna fall and it's, it's gonna be a big adventure of a trip. And, you know, it's a bit of a psychedelic trip. So have some fun with it. This is grand advice, Moni. I really like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> very good. Yeah, that was great. Manifesting generators cannot pursue and make things happen. Manifesting oh. generators. I feel like that's another myth. No, oh, I have this one, one though. Too. I have it. I mean, it's like with like human design, it's like you can pursue the things that interest you and you can develop those for yourselves. It's just about not trying to initiate and making things like other people do things. You're not trying to like make energy happen. So it's like as long as the man gen is like responding, like following their sacral response, like they can still pursue their own interests. They can still develop their own abilities and their skills. It's just, you know, maybe don't initiate and try to spearhead something. Yeah, dude, dude I, I, I always found that like a little bit crazy because the truth of the matter is a generators can manifest as a response. I, I remember in response, I'm suddenly moving the mountain, you know what I mean? And, and recruiting everyone else to do it and whatever. So it's it's just that manifestors do it. So they're naturally supposed to do it. That's their thing. We do. I do. If I if it's not a response out of me, I just I'm like a dog. If a dog, another dog's not walking by, I'm not barking, you know. <laughs> oh, perfect okay moving on okay, next one you got excited when you met someone who actually knew what human design is oh so god that's constantly. me i was so excited yeah, i got I that alone. oh no that's not right that's shit <laughs> <laughs> i thought i had it but i didn't oh. i think we all get excited when somebody i got it. Talks uh -huh. about it i got there it you go. Yeah, but it's not in a row. It's not helping me. All right. I mean, it's helping you in the long term. I was so excited. I went a couple of years <laughs> and it was just my teacher. And finally, someone knew something. I was like, whoa, 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 two, four. <laughs> Network with me. You know? I mean, my <laughs> best friend scared now. Him away. Probably scared him away. Okay. Okay, next one. As a projector, you have no energy. Oh, no, you just God. have other people's energy. <laughs> I got that one. Yay. In a row too. I'm on a. I'm on a tear. Oh, there you go. 
as a roof. I don't think I have that one as a projector. Yeah, I got that one too. No, nope. now I got two in a row somewhere. Uh oh, yeah, look too. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. This oh, is this is close. good. We're, no, we're neck and neck. Next Generators up. are only meant to build other people's dreams. No. Well, that's sort of how it's working now, a little bit. Um, I got that one too. Uh -huh. I have that one. What is it? What is it? Generators, Generators. are only Generators. meant to build other people's dreams. Like only when they're living incorrectly. It's like when they're living correctly, it's like they're building everything and like their own dreams are part of that. And it feels good because they're doing what's correct for them. Hey, stop asking these questions that aren't on my card. Yeah, that's what I say. That one's not on my card. I'm not going to tell you guys were ha ha that you have to I did it. We can. Because you right, love us friends. anyway. Next one, we have helped a client better their relationship. So, you know, husband, oh, yeah, wife, yeah, yeah, boyfriend, whatever, through HD. I have I that, that, but it's not, uh, it's not in any of my rows or columns or anything. So. It's just in your heart. Yeah, just in my heart. <laughs> it is a wonder, it's a wonderful feeling. You got to admit, it is a wonderful feeling when that happens. Next up, we got manifestors can only work for themselves meaning they're terrible employees oh i have that again no they just got to be doing the thing that's right for them they just got to be in the right position where they're initiating and being listened to if they need to be listened to and just kind of inform and get out of the way i have that one too so that's good yeah i'd say that there's some truth to that there's definitely a decent amount of truth to that Okay, hey, you got excited when you yeah. met someone with the same profile and energy type as you. Well, yeah. Oh, I got that what, one. What, what, what was the beginning of it? You got, got excited. excited. Oh, Just oh. got excited, though, if it's easier to find. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have that. Yeah, I know. I'm bummed I don't have it either. <laughs> Ironic given the question. Don't you laugh at me, Moni. Let's go off the rail, Kip. Let's start getting pissed. <laughs> okay. We have as a reflector, you are not allowed to work much. Oh, as a reflector. Is it? Oh, well, yeah. with like reflectors, it's Ooh. so funny because it's just like their energy is going to be so dependent on the moon. So it's like not consistently. You know, but like maybe they have these certain days where like they're really lit up and they can get a lot of stuff done. But then the other days they're not lit up. And so don't do a lot of stuff. So I think it's just like follow yeah, that strategy and follow the moon. Th this says you're not allowed to. Yep. Cool. Yeah, we, I know that. We have reflector police too. Yeah, yeah, I um, know. That's some BS right there. There you go. Yep. Total. <laughs> do what lights you up, people. Do what lights you up. Otherwise, you're a liar. All right, friends. So we got manifesting generators have endless amounts of energy and are always active. That's some BS right there. Only when it's right for them. That's it. Like when it's right for them, like, man, they're little energizer bunnies building that the world. That part's true. That part's true. And obnoxious, but... by the way. We're obnoxious. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. I mean, we yeah. love you, but yeah. We are obnoxious because we're dumb as rocks. Um. Did I say that out loud? I mean, you can say it about yourself, but I don't think it's true. <laughs> I, I was yeah, yeah so Manny Jones are some of my favorite people, and they're they're oh, not they're, dumb. <laughs> I, you know, they're like everybody else. There's good, there's wonderful ones for you, and ones that you don't like at all. That's just all right. Apparently. Have you quoted Ra during a client session? Quote Ra Never. all the time. Never. <laughs> I think I quote Ra all the time in my head, most of all. Of course. Who, I love who, listening who, yeah. to Raw. Projectors need an invitation for everything. <laughs> no, but it sure helps. <laughs> oh, I got that one, too. Look, so one more, and I got bingo, me? guys. No, stop that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. Come on. Give me a good one. <laughs> okay. Oh, I have that. Oh, there no, you go. Not, uh, Oh, it but might be slightly useful. different. Yeah, we have. All people should eat in a calm environment. Calm, calm and quiet, quiet environment. environment. Only no, that's just, their digestion. That's just me. I'm a four, I'm a fourth color. <laughs> I'm a little solar creature. I eat in the sun. Okay, generators are meant to be doing all the time and always have energy. Only one. Oh, oh, I got three. No, I don't got that one either. 
Moana, I think you're stacking the decks. I only need one more. I only need one more. I got two spots where if it shows up, I got Ew. bingo. Let's see. Told a non-sacral to sleep alone. Told everyone to sleep alone. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm a manifester. So every urge it, to create is the one to go with. Only if you're splenic. Otherwise, you got to wait out that wave. And then the whale, if it's the ego manifester, then they got to wait till they hear the will in their throat. So it's like you still got to wait out your wave if you're emotional and then inform people and then go with that urge to go. Indeed. Well, actually, this one is about like everything that comes into your head doing it. That's well, no, this no, no, I get it. But as a manifester, yeah. it's like, yeah, if you're splenic and if that urge is there, like that's a thing. Or if they're an ego mm -hmm. manifester and they can say, I will do this, I want to do this, then yeah, go for yeah. it. But like yeah, you're an like, emotional manifester, so you got to wait out that emotional wave. Like, and do then I really? Moni, you you find that out on your own. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, Reflectors don't know who they are. Nobody knows who they are, at least at first. <laughs> I'm a projector, so I need to sit back and wait for people to invite me to things. I have that, and yo, I don't have bingo. <laughs> I, I have that, and I don't have bingo neither. I don't, and I don't. But I'm a projector, and it sure helps. Manifestors must initiate all the time. Oh, I got that one. That was my uh, center spot. Only when it's correct for them to initiate. And they've informed first, so they let all of us know to get out of the. I'm a generator, so I'm just okay. a worker bee. I'm here okay. to work. <laughs> You're here oh, to put yeah. your energy into what you love and what's correct for you to make magic happen, and it's gonna feel good if you're doing the right thing. Indeed. <sighs> there you go. What part of the design makes you the brat? <laughs> oh, I can answer that. Good one, Jess. Good one. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Uh, it's my four. It's two of them, and they're both second lines. It's my uh, 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 forty-six two and my sixteen two. Forty-six two. Yeah, and you're six, oh yeah, there's your sixteen two is the Senec. And yeah, the forty-six the two. I'm gonna that look first, that one that up. That wants to burst bubbles. It's like, oh yeah, well, 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 actually, I got divorced over saying, well, actually, one too many times. I couldn't help it. It's not my fault. <laughs> Unconscious. And then forty-six two. <laughs> and then the forty-six two. Uh, that's the prima donna. The prima donna. The, the, a difficult um, and demanding nature that succeeds despite its behavior because of the depth of its talents. And the I other don't side believe is, that, but it seems uh, to work out. <laughs> Unrealistic demands and offensive nature of egocentric mediocrity. That was me as a younger man plenty of times. Yep. Yep. Well, friends, right. that was our show. Kip, thank yeah. you again for being a part of oh. our first time playing bingo. Yeah. Oh, this was this was really a lot of fun. I really enjoyed uh, talking with all of you. It was really a very yeah. interesting, very easy, and very comfortable. And this is, I haven't been on a lot of podcasts. I don't have time for them. If it yeah, weren't for your connection so with Tessa, I wouldn't have done this. But uh, yeah, this was really enjoyable. I had a great time. Thank you all. Thank you. All. I'm Thank so you glad. So it, it's a little different from a podcast because we're interacting live with the audience. Yes. That's the entire point. Yes, yes, yeah. yes exactly. Thanks for I coming on. Kip. Love you so oh, much, my man. Pleasure. I'm yep. very yeah. glad. Yeah. I we have one last question before we oh real quick off. it says real quick if anyone remembers the shift in mindset in a client what that what or what caused it does anyone you guys remember a moment where i guess whatever caused the shift i mean yeah, there's a lot of moments like that yeah, yeah. i've had uh, a few times where women have started crying yeah because yeah. i you know I, and it, the first time that happened was one of the first people I did a reading for, a lovely young woman, and she had an undefined G. And I was explaining to her, you're not here to know who you are. You don't have to be involved in that trip. Just let go of it. You're here to know other people much more deeply than I can, for example. Right. And uh, she was, uh, it just took so much pressure off. Mm. So you know, that for me is... It's the relieving of the pressure. Absolutely. Always when yeah. I hit... I'm always looking for the thing because I'm reading live. So I'm looking for their button. There's yeah. a button in there. And and usually we find it and then it, it profoundly gets to them. 
yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. It's a hard question to answer, whoever, uh, uh, Jess, it's just that it's, but it's so many things and it's always, it's almost always surrounding the difficult thing that really is yeah, profound. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And allowing that like recognition and just like seeing a person for something that's real and then that they thought was maybe wrong or bad or that they should be another way. It's those things, those expectations, those comparisons that we pick up from everywhere else. And you're like, oh my God, for that woman, I don't have to know who I am when there's been all this like fear and anxiety and concern about it. And it's just like, oh, I don't have to worry about that. It's, it's such a weight off the shoulders. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Hey.